Matthew chapter 21 verses 28 to 32. He changed his mind and went. Tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of heaven before you. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the, fir to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not, but afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, Yes sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? He answered, The first Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. The parable is really about responsibility, and sin. But let's put the parable in context. Jesus had cleansed the temple of the money changers and concession operators. Cursing the fig tree was a way of pointing out the hypocrisy of the religious leaders. His authority to do these things was then brought into question by the religious leaders. Verses 28 to 32 have to do with the average Jew and the various religious leaders' response to God's will. They are easily applied to you, and I as well as our present day ministerial leaders. Verses 33 have to do with their coming punishment for disobeying or ignoring the Father's will. And Matthew chapter 22 verses 1 to 14 explains how the punishment will be carried out. In today's reading the Father is God. The vineyard is Israel. The sons are the people of Israel who said they would follow God's law, law but didn't. The first son said he wouldn't do the work but eventually did, he represents the people of Israel who rebelled against God, Jesus, and John the Baptist but then eventually came to recognize and obey God's law. The second son who said he would obey the father but didn't represents the religious leaders who accepted their vocation, their responsibility, to do God's work but didn't. The vineyard, the earth, was where they were to minister on God's behalf, not their own. By virtue of their acceptance of God's call to ministry, and not doing God's will, demonstrated their disobedient and irresponsible behavior. The first son repented of his sin of disobedience against the father but the second son both lied and disobeyed the father, and continued in his opposition to the father, Jesus and John the Baptist. The first son knew he needed God, just like the tax collector and the prostitutes did, but eventually he repented and followed the will of the father. The second son or the religious leaders, felt they were in no need of God, they were self-sufficient, in control of their lives and considered both John the Baptist and Jesus threats to their authority. They were being phonies who would go through the motions of being religious leaders but only to enhance their own control over the people. They weren't the slaves doing the work of the Father, they were servants who served themselves. They had forgotten that they can fool men with their actions and words, but God knew their true intentions. Had the religious leaders followed John the Baptist's lead to righteousness, they would have accepted Jesus and have done the will of the Father. When the world asks if there is any hope, we say absolutely. No one is exempt from tragedy or disappointment, God himself was not exempt. Jesus was not offered immunity, no way out of the unfairness, but rather a way through it to the other side. Philip Yancey